This is Dr. William Summers from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I'm going to give a little talk here about the secret ingredient of Life Imagined. And people ask me all the time, well, okay, what's the secret ingredient in Life Imagined? And I always look a little bit puzzled because actually the secret ingredient is the synergy between the 34 different components. But to take the question seriously, one of the secret ingredients is are fat. And most people don't understand fat, so I thought we'd talk about fat today. And fat really seems to be an outer space for most people, hence the slug. But fats are really pretty simple. They're not soluble in water. They do dissolve in organic solvents like alcohol. For example, you can use alcohol uh, to clean a greasy pan. You will just cut the grease. They do create waterproof barriers, uh, for example, cell walls actually are fatty uh, material that separates water material such as the cytosol inside the cell from that which is outside the cell. They also transport essential fatty material through the blood. Fats are also used for energy storage and for signaling. But these days, we no longer call them fats, we call them lipids. Lipids are divided into about five or six different types, sterols, fatty acids, essential fatty acids, and glycerols. Basically, the most important fatty acids are those which end up becoming part of cell membranes. And here what we see is the use of phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylserine back to back in what's called a bilayer, um, in other words, a cell membrane, and you have a phosphatidylcholine, this column here, back to back with another column. <clears throat> and they create this barrier between inside the cell and outside the cell, and it goes down like bowling pins down to a glycoprotein, which would be a receptor down here. These bowling pins are actually areas that can more easily be hydrolyzed or they can be hit by free radicals and they can become rancid, which is the word for fats that have been hit with free radicals and reduced. With this in mind, let's go back and look at the classes of fats. There are the simple lipids, which are saturated fatty acids, monounsaturated fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Then there are the complex lipids, which would consist of triglycerides, phospholipids, and sterols. And there are many other types of lipids, but these are the important ones in the human body. This is a picture of a saturated fatty acid. It's actually stearic acid, which you find in cows, for example. It is an 18-carbon uh, creature and it has no double bonds anywhere. These are actually fairly healthy fatty acids. Common saturated fatty acids you see here include the two carbon acetic acid or four carbon butyric acid and the six carbon fatty acid, all of which can be found in butter, which today is considered a very healthy product. Also, there are the medium chain fatty acids, saturated fatty acids, that are easily absorbed by the body, including coconut oil, which is a 12 and 14 carbon um, fatty acid, and the more complex ones, such as the 20 carbon uh, fatty acid, are found in peanuts. The second class of simple fatty acids are the monounsaturated fatty acids, where there's a single double bond. That is to say, two hydrogens are missing. They were, in a reaction, removed and became a, a molecule of water. This is oleic acid, which is seen in olive oil, again, considered fairly healthy. And then there are the polyunsaturated fatty acids, and these are the bad players that you see in vegetable oils, such as the one shown here, or the artificial vegetable oils, uh, such as the ones found in Crisco. Uh, they're usually, with polyunsaturated, more solid than liquid. The uh, more saturated a fatty acid is, actually, uh, the more likely it is liquid.
This polyunsaturated fatty acid is actually in a group of polyunsaturated fatty acids. These are common monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids. You'll see that so-called uh, healthy olive oil is an 18-chain fatty acid. And if you look at the signature here, it has only one double bond at position 9. Okay. Um, the polyunsaturated fatty acids that are considered highly safe are the so-called fish oils, the EPA and the uh, DHA, and these are 20 and 22 carbons long, which makes them fairly complex creatures. Furthermore, they're truly polyunsaturated. The, the EPA has actually got five double bonds beginning at the three omega position, and the DHA has six double bonds beginning again at the three position. These very long and complex oils are actually absorbed in the distal bowel, and we'll get to that in a minute. But the complex types of fatty acids consist of, again, the triglycerides, the phosphatidyl, um, phospholipids, and the sterols. The triglycerides start with a glycerol backbone that is three carbons long. Uh, we see here it's like the letter E, and the top arm of this particular triglyceride is fully saturated. The middle arm is monounsaturated, that is one double bond, and the bottom has two double bonds, so it's a polyunsaturated fatty acid. Again, what one wants to say about glycerols, they are the fat that are found in meat. And what's interesting is when they're absorbed, Oftentimes, they're passively absorbed the way they are and then just sent for storage in your fat cells. So if all you ate was pork and I biopsied your fat cells, I would find this molecule in your fat cells. So you truly are what you eat. If all you ate was fish, the uh, glycerols that are in fish oil would show up in your fat. And by the same token, if all you ate was beef, uh, it would be, that particular fat would be directly absorbed to your fat cells. The phospholipids are treated very differently. Largely, again, it's like the letter E, but the bottom leg of the letter E has a phosphoric acid connected to choline. Choline is a unique form of fatty acid that combines with a, a, a cofactor called COA, you become acetyl-CoA, which is a neurotransmitter, which is imperative for memory. Without acetyl-CoA, you cannot have memory. The upper arm of the phospholipids is usually fully saturated. The middle arm of the E is usually highly unsaturated. Now, these complex pho phospholipids are treated very differently by the body. Instead of being passively absorbed, they are actively absorbed. And the reason for that is, is again, looking at this cell membrane, this is a dead setup to go rancid. This is a dead setup, these columns, to be hit by free radicals and begin to break down. And when they break down, it's like bowling pins. This one breaks down, which causes this one to break down, which causes this one to break down. And you have to have readily available phospholipids to repair it, as well as other antioxidant mechanisms. Otherwise, our brain would go rancid. The final form of complex fats in the body are the so-called sterols. And the sterols are based on the molecule cholesterol. As a matter of fact, cholesterol is the raw material from which the body uses to make vitamin D. Uh, cholesterol is also the raw material from which we make our anti-inflammatory molecules and the raw material from which we make all of our sex hormones and cortisol, stress hormones, etc. But this goes beyond that. When we look at the way the human bowel is set up, again, all of those 
glycerols, those triglycerides, in part get broken down into some free fatty acids that get absorbed through here. But by the time you get to the distal bowel, the triglycerides can be passively absorbed. <clears throat> by passively, I mean it's just a, a gradient that goes across, it goes up to the liver, and in the liver it's broken down, and that fish oil can then be made into phospholipids, which the body cherishes. Or it can be stored directly in the fat cell as fish oil. On the other hand, the phospholipids, which are components in uh, both memory revitalizer and in life imagine, cause active absorption from the duodenum, the first section after the stomach. This active process of pulling it across the bowel into the bloodstream is repeated in the brain. And so the brain has an active way of taking phospholipids up to repair all of that injury that we saw in the previous slide. Now, when you look at the formulation of Life Imagine, there's several different fats in the formula. From beta carotene, which is a form of vitamin A, vitamin A itself, Vitamin E has eight different types called tocotrienols and tocopherinols. These are all fats. And when they're absorbed in the phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylserine, they're actively absorbed. So true with the DMAE, which is a precursor to acetylcholine, alpha-lipoic acid, and coenzyme Q10. Absorption for all of these things becomes remarkably better in the presence of phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylserine. One other thing, the vitamin C, even though it's a water-soluble vitamin, actually hangs on to the phosphide end, the phosphatidylcholine, and the vitamin C regenerates all of these other fats in the formula that could go rancid. So it's, it's a synergistic formulation. The 34 components play nice together, and they all row the boat in the same direction. And when we start to look at why would we put together 34 components, let's look at the complexity of the cell. This is a very complex thing. Look at all of these things, these funny little organelles, these mitochondria over here, and Golgi apparatus, and ribosomes, and nucleus, and each one of them have membranes that are subject to becoming branches. And in the nerve cell, which is a highly active, metabolically a highly active cell, uh, these things are prone to have free radicals and break down all the time. So the 34 components are going to work in different areas. And the next time we'll go into some of the other 34 components that might work, let's say, inside the mitochondria or around the mitochondria, like vitamin E, or like uh, CoQ10, for example, which is causes mitochondrial relief. So that's for the next time, but let's take one final look at the cell membrane. What we see is we have the phosphatidylcholine or phosphorine or phosphatidylinosol. That adds to how liquid the cell membrane is. And if you recall, if you were to take a fresh brain and put it in your hand, it would have the consistency of yogurt. It's very plastic, very runny, if you will. If you added more cholesterol, then the cell walls become more rigid. And for example, liver cells have much more cholesterol. And so if you hold the liver up, it is much less runny. It's a more solid organ. Uh, and, but for the brain to be highly effective and efficient, it needs to be more fluid, and hence it needs more phosphatidylcholine and phosphatidylserine than other cells in the body. And that's why life imagined is targeted to the brain. Because if your brain is healthy, guess what? You can begin to formulate the life you imagine and move in the direction of that life you imagine and obtain the life you imagine. Thank you for joining me today in our first explanation of this formulation.